Hello, I'm Philip Meyer. I'm an electronics engineer and uh, today we want to deal uh, with an old timer. And if you know me right, uh, you shouldn't expect a car here. It's a computer instead and uh, it's the same minor as in a PDP-11. So this is the PDP-11 computer. It's quite a new machine. It uh, occupies only three height units inside the rack, so it's very small. Uh, almost like a modern server today uh -huh. and um, yeah it has a Winchester drive which is very nice because these drives are still available um, on the VEX computers uh, this DSSI uh, stuff is a lot more nasty uh, but yeah okay um, here we have the floppy drive um, it's an HD floppy drive a normal PC floppy drive nothing special on this um, here we have the CPU board with uh, the bootstrap ROM, uh, the RAM, uh, it's not entirely covered, maybe this is upgrade able, but I'm not sure what, which uh, wire wrap jumpers I have to set to make it a bigger RAM, so uh, yeah, I don't know the size yet, uh, maybe find out later. Uh, here we have the uh, DCJ11 uh, CPU which has also the pet name JAWS 11. Um, it's made by Harris. And here we have two other uh, ceramics. And yeah, for uh, operating this board properly, you need uh, a bulkhead. Um, the bulkhead uh, features the uh, two serial ports. This machine has two serial ports built in, which is very nice. You can uh, connect to the one you connect your uh, TU uh, somewhat, I don't know the number right now, drive into the other, the console or, or console uh, to uh, both, of, both of them. You have these famous uh, digital style baud rate switches and the diagnostic display, which we also have um, on the Waxen. Yeah, this is uh, a serial port. For the, there were lots of serial cards in there. I removed them all to have the most minimal system possible. Yes, also stereo ports as well, and a lot of cables are hanging out. And an Ethernet card is also possible. Here we have the Ethernet bulkhead, AUI style, old school yellow cable stuff. Yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah, this is a bit dark, but uh, yeah, we have a floppy controller was built in Winchester's all uh, yeah, all in one stuff here, which uh, yeah cable comes out and goes to some bulkheads uh, on a bulkhead out as separate connectors. So this is the controller card for this and there's also, I think you cannot see it, but I can pull it at least. Uh, pull this as well. And here, here we have uh, the uh, so-called grand continuity card. Uh, I've labeled this because it's prone to put it the wrong way around and if you do so then yeah. I think then you can smell uh, the bus drivers releasing their uh, magic smoke. So yeah, always double check how you plug this in. So and yeah to uh, make sure that it's um, working properly. Uh, uh, yeah, we have to give the power supply a basic check first, and yeah, so let's do this right now. Okay, everything runs and fails with the power supply. Um, here I've took, uh, I took the power supply out, and uh, yeah, what you first should check is um, the electrolyte uh, capacitors. If they here, they have a wonderful flat surface, so this is. Not a source of a problem. The big ones um, also uh, seem to be in a good condition, so not to worry about this. Uh, this fat guy here is also in a good condition. Thing is, what you have to look for is some uh, electrolyte uh, coming out of the capacitors, or if uh, the surface you can. Uh, see the metal surface it has some uh, yeah if this uh, is becoming uh, round and fat and maybe some brown uh, hairs are hanging out 
uh, then that is a, a sign that you should replace the capacitors. So the visual inspection of the power supply is done and now we do the electrical check. Okay, this is the test setup. Um, I've looked up uh, the voltage ranges I should expect on the 12 volt and the 5 volt rail and uh, yeah, uh, we have two uh, powerful friends here uh, which will help us during the measurement process. Um, yeah, anyway, um, we have uh, access to the 5 volt rail right here and this is ground of course. And yeah, of course, as well, here is also an option. And yeah, 12 volt is somewhere here, but it's not really present uh, there. Uh, I think it's mostly used for the common, most commonly used for the drives, but it's as well present um, on the uh, back plane. And yeah, we have um, on the slope board. Um, we have uh, only the 5 volt rail covered with uh, resistors. The 12 volt rail is not, uh, but it's accessible here. So, yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Let's give it a go. Uh, power switch is right here. Uh, the lamps are lighting up. And uh, in the oscilloscope, I already have the 5 volt rail connected. And yeah, we see. Uh, Beautiful flat line, uh, nothing suspicious here, so that should be fine. So now um, let's check with the multimeter. So, and here we have, uh, oh, yeah, what's the final stop back light? 5.15 uh, uh, volts and and the spec states that yeah, it should be between 5.97 and 5.22, so it's within the spec, uh, everything fine on that. It's amazing that a uh, power supply that is that old is uh, still in its spec. I, uh, to be honest, I uh, expected that it is a bit off, but you know, apparently it's not. So uh, yeah, for the oscilloscope it's a bit... Uh, yeah, when you check the uh, 12 volt ra uh, rail, uh, we have to do it uh, by hand, by tapping here, and you see uh, a flat line. It was a bit spiky, I think, but it shouldn't be harmful. Uh, at least I hope so. So we move this to be sure that we don't short it out, and yeah, we tap the. 12 volt rail on the PCB and yeah 12.106 volts there fine what does the spec say spec says uh, oh it's one one yeah between 11.79 and 12.40 yeah that's uh, beautifully in the spec yeah if you look here 12.1 that's exactly what we should expect it's in the spec almost beautifully. Works like a charm. So now we uh, can be safe. Uh, I think we can be safe to plug uh, in the boards and uh, yeah, have some fun with the uh, computer itself and not only with the power supply checking. But um, checking the power supply is an absolutely necessary thing on these old machines you should do it uh, if you have stored your machines for um, some time and if you get a uh, new machine into your collection then uh, of course you should check so that's it done so we have made uh, sure that everything at least electrically is safe and uh, yeah let's uh, give it a go Okay, I have a terminal connected to the PDP now through a um, uh, self-made adapter. Um, and the bulkhead is connected to the CPU module as well, obviously. And yeah, set it to 9K6 uh, uh, baud and yeah, now let's boot it up by Pressing the rocker switch. So there is something. It's 
coming to life. This apparently is uh, the self test, I think. So all numbers are there, so I think all tests are passed. Um, the uh, diagnostic uh, display shows an E, whatever that means. And yeah, the floppy drive is coming to life. So that means that the uh, floppy controller basically this should work, at least in theory. And the tester drive is doing nothing, I think. All these noises are hopefully coming from the floppy drive, otherwise it would mean that this is, is a head crash. <laughs> Sounds awfully. Yeah, it obviously tries to boot from that floppy. If I know these floppies empty, it's just, it's just in there for um, testing. If it tries at least to do something with that floppy, and it prompts us to uh, press Ctrl C. I can try to do it. Ctrl C, and now it has a bot. Um, the um, the bootloader and yeah, floppy drive silent now and uh, uh, it's, there's not much I can try now as I don't have a boot test ready right now. Um, you can press halt and this is something uh, what uh, is called uh, the ODT prompt. This at um, here. Um, the ODT stands for, at least to my knowledge, uh, Octal Debugging Technique, not Tool. Um, yeah, this is the uh, Machine Language Monitor, and this is uh, where we uh, take a closer look at, at the next part, because we have to load some utility to uh, do something with the machine. So that's it for now, and I hope you enjoyed um, these little walkthroughs through the PDP 11 computer, and maybe you've learned something. Um, in the next video, we will deal um, with the ODT prompt uh, I've shown you, and yeah, um, hopefully, uh, I see you again then. Goodbye.